Hello everyone. Welcome to my webinar. As you can see, I am starting a series of academic writing tips just for you to be able to better your professional writing and get your research work published much more easily. This material belongs to Çanakkale 18 Mart University Continuing Education Center and this material, this webinar is prepared by me. Associate Professor Dr. Kürşat Cesur. Well, I have completed my undergraduate, graduate and doctoral studies in the field of English language teaching. And I am Associate Professor Dr. Kürşat Cesur and I have been working at the Department of English Language Teaching Çanakkale 18 Mart University since 2013. Our first video is about academic writing, which is about its fundamentals, features, and its different sections. Here you can see the objectives, you can see the outcomes of my lesson. So the students who watch the video will be able to define what constitutes an academic writing by stating its features of clarity, consistency, focus, structure, and probable nature. And they will be able to explain the main features of academic writing and their place in the process of writing. And finally, they will be able to correct the structure and academic writing with all its sections in proper form and order. Here you can see the table of contents. As I told, I will be talking about principles, features, and different sections of academic writing. Before proceeding with the slides, let's firstly define our term, academic writing. Let me give you five seconds to think about the term. What do you think academic writing is? Yes, as you think, it's a piece of writing informing about a specific subject, you know, such as essays, articles, or reports. It informs people about a specific subject in a manner which is clear, on point, focused, structured, and proven. Now, let's talk about the principles of academic writing. Academic writing is formal, both in tone and style, but doesn't necessarily require the use of long sentences and unintelligibly complicated choice of words. In academic writing, each field has specific conventions of writing, vocabulary, and discourse sorts. Usually, the focus is on the subject instead of the writer. So, maintaining an objective and impersonal style in writing can make it more convincing. For example, it will be argued that the use of first language in ELT is beneficial instead of, I will argue in this essay that. So, instead of stating I, we, or instead of stating the authors, you can just say it is stated, it can be claimed. So the focus is on the subject instead of the writers or the authors of academic writing. And academic writing uses, you know, an objective, impersonal style structured with formal vocabulary. While writing an academic word, utilize passive forms and formal verbs if possible. So, remember to be coherent and cohesive with the use of markers like firstly, secondly, initially, lastly, and linkers like as a result, in accordance, therefore, etc. Never let your points be left out without reasons and examples. 
you need to prove them. Back up your claims and points. And you should avoid the use of personal pronoun, I, as well as contractions, extreme statements like it is never, okay? And non-colloquial English, I mean informal English. What about the features of academic writing? Academic ri writing has a central matter or theme, every part of which contributes to the main argument. The objective in academic writing is just to inform. So, let's continue with the other features of academic writing. The first one is complexity. Written language is usually more complex than the spoken language. And the other one is formality. Any informal words and expressions should be avoided in academic work. And what about objectivity? The focus should be on the issue, on the topic, rather than you as the author. And as for the explicitness, how parts of the academic text relate to one another is your responsibility by using signaling words. Academic writing is explicit. And hedging, you should decide upon your viewpoint on a specific matter or the power of your claims. And finally, as a feature of academic writing, we can talk about responsibility. You are the responsible partly for providing evidence and justification for your claims in your writing. Our last part of this presentation is sections of academic writing. Before we get into main sections, let's, let's have a look at the headings level. APA journals use heading levels varying from 1 to 5. So the first title should have the level 1. So you, the main title of your research should be written in level 1 and you can write introduction in level 2 maybe you can write problem statements uh, limitations of the work research questions in level 3 and again in level 2 you can go to the next section literature review so under the heading of literature review you can write world Englishes uh, in level 3 and these are the levels different levels of titles in APA style. Here we have a brief look at the sections of academic writing. We will go into details. So the sections of academic writing are cover page, abstracts, content page, most in most of time in thesis, introduction, literature review, methodology, findings, discussion, conclusion, and so what part implications and references and appendixes so let's start with the cover page cover page is the first page of your text so you should have the running hat being an abbreviated title that is 50 characters at maximum the running hat is in all uppercase letters flush left at the top of the title page then you can have the page number and you will write the title your main heading should summarize the general idea of the text in a simple and explanatory manner typed in upper and lower case letters and it should be centered on the page what about the identity information well it should have your title name and institutional affiliation and the name should be typed in upper and lower case letters centered and double spaced one line before the title. Then you can add your ORCID ID numbers and some other information about uh, your research and about your affiliation. You should also state, that state so con conflict of in interest. So, you don't have any conflict, conflict of interest to disclose. 
you can have this as a statement or if you have an ethical issue like you know if you get ethical permission from a, an institution you can also state uh, the number of the ethical uh, permission letter here in the cover page your abstract is the summary of your article you have the title abstract which informs the reader that this is the summary of the article they are going to read so it's not the article itself but the title abstract is centered one double spaced in line above the body so the body of the abstract is a comprehensive summary of your paper it's usually between 150 words and 300 words so it gives some information about about the importance of the study about the methodology some some main findings and it summarizes the whole text whole research text here you can see an example of a content page so in most of the research articles you cannot see contents page but in ma thesis and phd dissertations you can see table of contents as for the introduction session you have a background so you give short information about the topic after giving short information about the topic you state the aims and research questions and you can also explain the importance of the study here in this section and what you expect from the study is also given in the introduction section so an author uh, or authors should be aware of the limitations of their study so the study's shortcomings can also be mentioned in the introduction session what about the literature review here you present the works you referred while trying to comprehend and investigate your research problem in the methodology section you can define your methodology of the work so it can be qualitative quantitative or mixed method research so you need to define your setting and your participants of the study maybe the sampling type of sampling and the materials and instruments that you use like questionnaires interviews or observation and you need to explain the procedures for data collection and analysis in the finding session <coughs> the data collected is presented which can be in tables graphs or diagrams as all authors choice and this discussion part can also be merged with the findings part the main purpose of it is to discuss the results to draw a conclusion to uh, prove your points as for the conclusion part here writers final points are included issues raised in the introduction part should be recalled and mixed with the points made throughout the findings and discussion to draw a clear conclusion it should give the impression that the purpose has been achieved so implication session is really important also known as recommendations so what can be done with reference to your results so so what this is the section you mention about your uh, recommendations your suggestions well you carry out the research and what are it you know its implications so what what happened after this research so you will uh, explain these things in this session list of works you cited throughout the paper is listed here in this section appendix uh, you you can have any type of material you use while researching and you can attach to the article as an appendix for example it can be a questionnaire it can be a listening passage you assigned during the research so, these are the textual resources I made use of while preparing this presentation. So, 
these are the references of my presentation textual references and these are the visual ones visual references that I made use of in this presentation so thank you so much for listening to me I gave brief information about academic writing now you will be listening to the second video of this webinar which is about plagiarism